They say that when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And all I have is an atheist podcast. So I have to keep that in mind, right? I have to constantly ask myself, am I just slamming my atheist hammer around in hopes of finding a nail? Or does religion actually create or exacerbate every goddamn problem that has or will ever emerge in the universe? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying religion created this pandemic. I'm also not saying it didn't, though. Right? Like, who the fuck knows the full extent of their anti-scientific bullshit? They've steered countless minds away from things like science in general and biology in particular. They actively stand in the way of shit like stem cell research, all while promoting a dangerous, self-serving skepticism of objective fact. How the fuck do you begin to calculate all the breakthroughs that they've stifled, delayed, or prevented? But... We do not need to step into such esoteric realms to pin a flaming bag of blame on religion for this shit. I mean, either I'm swinging Maslow's hammer like Donkey Kong is throwing barrels at me, or they've signed their name on this disaster like they were going to hang it in a goddamn museum. Consider this Robert Redfield motherfucker. I'm going to be honest, I'd never heard of this guy until the crisis broke out. He's the head of the CDC, and, and by the standards of the Donald Trump administration, he's more or less qualified. I mean, that's a pretty low bar, right? He'd satisfy the qualifications for that sentence as long as he'd done a medicine thing once. So, but stay with me here. Redfield is a virologist who made a name for himself with pioneering AIDS research back when he was working at the Walter Reed Medical Center. But he also pissed away a ton of money on an HIV vaccine idea that he was later accused of radically overselling. Accused to the point that the Army did a misconduct investigation, actually. Ultimately, they said he didn't do anything wrong, but it shot his credibility with a lot of people and he retired from the Army shortly thereafter. So why was a guy with such an obvious blemish on his career put in charge of the CDC? You know, let alone a guy who had pretty much zero experience running a big bureaucracy. Well, for that, we have to click on the tab at the bottom of his Wikipedia page that says, see also sexual abstinence. See, back when he was in his AIDS research heyday, he was a big proponent of abstinence-only education as the chief means for halting the virus's spread. And that, of course, means that he was opposed to contraception. He stood between condoms and Africa in the 80s. That's a roundabout way of saying he killed people with AIDS. Now, you know, he's come out since then and said that, like, you know, maybe free condoms would be more effective than telling people not to fuck. But we have to wonder whether he really believes that or he's just trying to satiate the press. And what's more, the only goddamn reason anybody wanted him for this job is because we have to wonder about that. Right. And now here we are, the fucking guy that religion brought to the party. Lo and behold, his only qualifications are loving the right dead carpenter. And nobody outside of the Donald Trump Fox News circle jerk is denying that he and his CDC have fucked every outbreak monkey between Wuhan and Washington state in their response to this thing. And, and every indication is that Redfield has just been staring into those headlights for weeks, wondering why the fucking car hasn't run him over yet. It, it's been a horrible clusterfuck precisely because the man at the top had no clue what he was doing. But it's not like the only person in charge that attained their position solely because of religious affiliation was this motherfucker. When it became clear that Redfield wasn't up to the task of helming the response, schmuck on the ranch turned to none other than Mike fucking Pence to take over in his stead. And as I'm sure you'll recall, he's only there because he won the hearts of evangelical bigots by holding his breath the longest as to whether Christian restaurants had to serve gay people. Look, as partisan as our politics have gotten of late, and, and many would say that's historically partisan, we still don't give a shit whether our doctors are Democrats or Republicans. If an American discovers a vaccine for this thing, we're not going to ask who he voted for in 2016 before we take it. If the CDC makes a recommendation, Democrats won't ignore it because it's a Republican-controlled department. I mean, yes, Trump managed to inject partisan politics into the situation when he labeled it a Democratic fucking hoax. But by and large, Americans aren't buying into that. Pretty much all of us are abiding by the recommendation of our public health professionals. Except, of course, as we'll discuss throughout this goddamn episode, religious people. Because as bad as our partisan politics have gotten, we're still willing to set them aside when shit really hits the fan. Sure, we're all going to retreat back to our own set of facts when this is all over, but Republicans and Democrats are going to come together on this shit at least through the crisis. Christianity, though, will not. Their commitment to their idiosyncratic facts set is far greater than anything party affiliation can muster. Hell, you get religious enough and you're willing to die over this shit. Look, anytime you have a person obtaining an important job for some reason other than their qualifications, you should be worried. And not only does religion allow for that, it insists on it. 
You know, let me be clear what I mean here, because I, you know, I'm sure there are people listening to this and objecting to the notion that this is somehow worse than partisan politics. They'll point out that, you know, this shit happens regardless of religion. Right. It's not like President Joe Biden would install a CDC head that had publicly spoken out against Obamacare, even if that person was the most qualified to do the job. And yes, that would be an example of letting a political consideration override a qualification. And that's fair. But that's an order of magnitude lower than what I'm fucking talking about. At least there's a very big difference between holding a minority view on policy and holding a minority view on biology.